All right. Ah. So I made a, a video a while back on a device from Nubia called the Nubia X. It took the whole bezel-less, no notch, no front facing camera thing to a crazy level to display setup so that when you wanted to take a front facing picture, you would just flip the whole device around. And then on the other side, on the main display, you, would never, you wouldn't have to worry about any distraction because you don't need a front facing camera. But they're not done. They came back with a brand new version, which is set to distribute more widely to the North American market, Europe. This is the one you actually can get. It's called the Z20. It's actually a surprisingly decent value as well. It's packing a Snapdragon 855 chipset inside of it, eight gigs of RAM up to 512 gigs of storage. And the price for it is gonna be somewhere between four and 500 maybe five and six, like somewhere in that territory, which is actually really competitive, especially when you consider you have OLED displays, full display on the front, no notch, no nothing. So it's, it's actually a kind of interesting package. Now this one came straight from China. So this is not the international version as important to mention. So the packaging will likely change for your locale. It also features fast charging up to 27 Watts. And this is where things get real fancy. Okay, so a very Samsung-esque construction going on. So it's got Gorilla Glass, so it's gonna be fairly durable. You can kind of tell there's a display hiding right around here. So that's obviously the back of the device. It kind of feels like an over-engineering, but people are doing crazy things to get these bezel-less designs on the front. This is a solid state play. Like nothing has to move here to be able to deliver front-facing images. Is that two flashes? It looks like two flashes actually, and three camera units. The fingerprint scanner, rather than be in display like so many that are out there right now, it's along the side, similar to the Samsung Galaxy S10e. I don't mind this implementation. Your thumb goes there anyways. It has the exact same thing mirrored on the other side. You can unlock it this way, looking at the camera. You can unlock it this way, looking at the main display. The bottom of the device is actually concaved. This little groove goes inward. It's all metallic and glass. It feels very high quality. USB type C power brick included in the package. As I said, fast charging capable. The phone can go up to 27 Watts. A fairly nice black and red type C cable. They've included a type C to mini jack connector as well for typical analog headphones. It's a simple unboxing experience. That's what you're gonna get. All right, so this display actually looks pretty nice. It's FHD and somehow actually the resolution is the same on both displays. So your pixel density is, is weirdly gonna be better on the rear display. Nonetheless, you go from 6.4 inches to 5.1, quite a bit more dim on the back. It's important to note because it's coming through this kind of mirror finish, it almost acts like a filter sort of, getting less of those cool tones associated with OLED displays coming through. To me, it's just a bit dimmer. You're seeing fingerprints more, it's more reflective. And if you go and boot up the camera here, you're using your high quality rear camera that goes for the main camera, that goes for the wide camera, which is super wide. Whoa, that is crazy wide. Let's see if I can snap this. That might be the widest selfie we've taken. That's some funky, that's almost like GoPro level. If I was trying to take a selfie of a large group of people, I'd get almost six people in there. That's one of the widest I've seen. 12 millimeter equivalent, that's pretty wide. I'm still a bit pretty looking in the, in the complexion there. I did turn the beauty down. Look at this, Jack. When I go out of the camera, I go out of the camera, it's blue, then it goes yellow. You see that? So like the eye care thing appears to pop on and that's showcased, as you can see, when I click back over. A dedicated button for switching displays, the alternative display through the software. The fact that you could pack all of this in there, is pretty wild. You don't have the slimmest bezels on this guy. This is sort of like iPhone XR territory. Now granted, you might make the mental adjustment given the fact that you're at a different price point here compared to some of the big dogs like the Note series. This thing's gonna be between four and 500. All right, so the big camera unit on the back is gonna give you 48 megapixels. It's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and it's all jammed in there alongside the extra display. Now, speaking of that camera, we can showcase its capabilities here. I'm gonna have the HDR set to auto. That's at 1x, here's 3x, there's your wide, which measures 0.6, 
And we have all the way up to 10X here, whoa. That's pretty wild, did you see that? Look at his tattoos. I didn't even notice those tattoos on his arms on that character previous to this. A 2.5 centimeter macro. So does that mean I could be even closer to him? It went into this like almost AI mode called Super Micro Spur. Look at that. We've done a lot of uh, photos in this environment. And without using some kind of adapter, I can't say we've ever got that close to this figurine's tattoos. Like that's his tattoo. Holy moly. Is it time for a macro beard hair? It's never been done before. Bananas. That's a whole new beard hair level going on. Oh my goodness gracious. I mean, that's just a regular zoom photo. That's not any kind of macro effect or something. That's just the zoom functionality, the wide functionality, and then the standard focal range. I mean, these are some pretty nice photos. Here in North America, this price doesn't put it in the same realm as the Note series, as the upcoming iPhone at that thousand plus price point. It's half that. So for me, it's, it's definitely mid-range, it's definitely value territory. Like that's OLED now, between four and $500. That's two displays, that's 4,000 milliamp hour. That's Snapdragon 855, eight gigs of RAM. It's, it's an interesting package, that's for sure. Now, you know I always care about the, the audio performance as well. I'm just on the web browser version of YouTube here because Google Play services aren't currently installed on in this. Remember I told you this is the the Chinese version of this device, so we can get a sense for what the video looks like and also the audio performance. That's probably telling that they're just experimenting on iOS. Some of the categories include Explore Great Britain, Real, and Riveting. The speaker's pretty clear. It's not crazy loud, but it's better than plenty that I've heard. It seems like it's just firing yes, out of the bottom. Real. Let's keep it light. I don't know. How do you even come yeah. It's probably better than I expected. It's definitely not the best. The majority of phones that show up here sound worse than this one, I would a say. step backwards in time here. Being it's iOS only, that's probably telling that they're just experimenting on iOS. Cool, I'm all right with that. What's the story of this phone? Well, yeah, it kind of is another smartphone in a, in a vast landscape of smartphone options and an increasingly crowded area of the smartphone marketplace in a four to $500 range which actually seems to be like the real battleground where crazy stuff is happening. These are, these are the people taking chances, the, the devices taking chances, I should say. And I don't know, there's something about this one that to me is kind of cool. If you had this device, you know you kind of have something that a lot of people wouldn't have seen before. Obviously that's not typically enough to make a purchasing decision just to show it off. But the thing about this device is it kind of backs it up from a spec perspective. Snapdragon 855, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, lots of megapixels, some cool camera units to play around with. The rear display is an absolute fingerprint fiasco. You would pretty much be crazy to put a case on this, obviously, because you'd be covering up an important component of the device. So you're going to live in fingerprint land whether you like it or not. So that's something you've also got to take into consideration. And, and the fact that you got to be a bit gentler with it because a case will not be an option. But nonetheless, it's cool. It's not gonna replace the device that I'm currently using. I'm glad that it exists. It's the more widely available version of the previous Nubia X, now in the form of the Nubia Z20. Screen number one. Screen number two.